Hey cats, Ed Budd here, your favourite artisan shoe enthusiast. Today, with an initial review of the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38, the latest iteration of Nike's shoe for every runner. How does it hold up? Let's get to it. So, a year on from the Pegasus 37, a shoe that didn't quite live up to expectations. We have a big upper update here, sticking with the same four foot air loaded React midsole and rubber outsole. I have a UK size 11 here, which is a US size 12. I got the old scales out and this one comes in at 345 grams, which is 12.2 ounces. If we compare that up to the old hot rod edition from last year, the 37, this one's only 325 grams, 11.5 ounces. So we've got a bit of a weight increase there, about 20 grams or so, could put a few people off already. It looked good, but Alas, the lockdown was lacking. So it makes the new version a tad heavier. I picked this one up for 105 Earth credits directly from the Nike website. I purchased this myself. It hasn't been sent to me for review or anything like that. So yeah, you know you're gonna get my honest opinions. I cannot help but give them. I've liked previous models of the Pegasus, so that's why I've picked this one up. A lot of people ask me, well, why have you bothered reviewing this one, Ed? You know, same midsole, same outsole. Uppers make a shoe. And I think this one could be different. Let's find out. You can really help us out in the shoe alcove here if you give this video a thumbs up like. It really does help to get us out to some more people. Danke schön. So I've taken this one out on a couple of runs. Initially, a seven mile effort, which is 11.27 kilometers. Roughly at a steady speed, seven minutes, 45 seconds per mile average. And a second effort of four miles or 6.4 kilometers at about 30 seconds off my goal half marathon pace, which is six minutes, 50 per mile. I'll put some kilometer conversions up for you guys. So I know you like those. I like kilometers too. Hey, I'm not choosy. Either works. Upper first. So they've switched up the materials this time. It's a much softer sort of feel in the upper. Almost plush, I might say. As I was finishing up my run today, I was walking up the road thinking, this almost feels as plush in the toe box as the Triumph 17. It's kind of odd. Certainly at a better upper here though than the Invincible run. It's quite hard to make one that's worse than that in fairness. Sometimes Nike nail it with an upper. I think they got it right this time around. That toe box height is certainly higher. There's a little more space there to accommodate the toes. Feels like there's a nice spacious feel there at the front. I wouldn't suggest that the toe box is any wider uh, as it says on the Nike website. I, I don't believe that. But certainly there's a bit more height there to the toe box and my feet didn't feel like they're being sort of crushed together. Those four bands on each side of the upper really do work very well to lock the shoe down on top of your foot. I really didn't get on with those rigid lace loops on the 37 and these seem a good sort of halfway house. Seemingly more flexible and accommodating. There's a lot more padding in that tongue and it's a lot longer as well. You can see it protrudes just past the upper. Yeah, it works really well. That whole system now, you can get a lockdown within secondary, just since the laces, tie the shoe and you're ready to go, which is what you want when you're a man who's short on time. One strange oddity though, is this weird sort of lace loop thing that they've put in here with the shoe information on. I mean, I've put the laces over the top of it, but they came with it underneath and it just flaps around. It just looks really weird. Is it some sort of pull tab type situation? Like a loop, I just don't know, it's weird. Why? Who thought it was a good idea? Just a lace loop somewhere would have been fine and adequate. That would have stopped the tongue from moving around. I haven't experienced any of that as of yet. It stayed exactly where I left it. Suffice to say, the presence of that is just quite bizarre. On the first run, I had nice mild temperatures, 14 degrees centigrade. I've got to say, my foot started getting a little warm. There's quite a bit of upper material here. I did have a very thin sock on as well, and by the end, yeah. It was toasty. It could mean that we end up with quite an odorous experience towards the end of the shoe's life cycle. I did also find using some very low profile socks that the very top of the tongue here did start to rub on my foot a little bit. I didn't have any problems using some longer socks today. Uh, in fact, the run was really enjoyable today. Nice crisp temperatures out there and I got up to some faster speeds. Just a thing to bear in mind with that tongue. Just, just be careful. I don't want anyone to get rubbing on their foot or anything or injure themselves. That would be the last thing I'd ever want to happen. Of course, these upper improvements come at a price of that extra weight. 345 grams for a daily shoe is quite considerable, really. I mean, you're not far off the Infinity Run, the Invincible Run. There's a whole mass of other daily shoes you can pick up that are 
so much lighter. I mean, look at the Mac 4, for example. Around about 260 grams in my UK size, 11 and a half, this one. So yeah, keep that in mind, people. That aside, a really big improvement over the Pegasus 37. I'm gonna give this one a 2.5 out of three for the upper after my initial runs. Midsole now. Okay, same React midsole unit as featured on the Pegasus 37. I can actually feel the air unit and the midsole foam a little bit more. Now I've actually managed to lock my foot down on top of the midsole. Can't say I've really felt the air unit at all in the 37. I remember I even tried removing the insole from that one to see if I could feel it, but certainly more prominent here in the 38. I do still find it a little bizarre that they've opted for this very spongy insole within the 38. It does kind of negate the effect of that air unit a little bit. I found the midsole performed really well at a steady pace of seven minutes, 45 seconds per mile, which is about four minutes, 49 per kilometer. It actually felt really nice on hills. It's got a considerable hill I undertook in the first run and going up there, you can feel it a little bit more. It's beneficial. One thing I did notice where they've carved out quite a lot of the midsole material here, doesn't really feel like there's an awful lot there underneath your foot. This iteration of the shoe certainly did feel as if I could turn up the pace a little bit more felt like I was locked in and that I wanted to move faster in it. I never felt that in the 37. It does feel a little softer out the box than I remember the 37 being. I even looked back through my old notes about the shoe. Maybe just a touch, but I do still find React a little bit denser than some of the other daily midsole materials that you find it in some of the recent shoes. All right, certainly denser than the Nitro stuff in the Puma offerings and far less compressive than the Float Ride Energy 3 midsole, for example. Did feel good today when I turned the pace up. Midsole started to give back a little more. Maybe it was that air unit in the front. Certainly does feel a little bit different, this. Maybe it's production tolerances, I don't know. Maybe it's just the upper working its magic again, uh, making it feel like I'm a bit more locked into the shoe. More all-round experience. I only give it a 2.5 out of three for midsole after my initial runs. Outsole now. Outsole wise, we have the same dependable patterns that we found on the 37. It's a real mixed bag, actually. You've got quite bitey protrusions, sharp, and they're quite hard, in fact. I did find it quite a loud outsole today when I turned up the pace. It really does create quite a noise. I really do feel it's one of the best bits of the 37 and certainly one of the best bits of the 38. A really versatile outsole here. I took it on some mud, some grass, felt really, really good. Traction was on point. I think you could use it for some light trails even. Right, it's pretty much down to that waffle-like pattern. Though I would suggest if you're gonna take it on trails, be a little bit careful because you've got this very hollowed out section at the back here, which you do fall into a little bit if you are certainly using your heel a little more. Not to say the shoe's unstable, it's actually a very stable ride in the 38. I don't think you're gonna have to worry about durability here on the outsole of the Pegasus 38. As proved from the last version, this stuff really does hold up well. I think it, when it comes to daily shoe offerings, you want something that's gonna provide the durability, and I think that does it in spades. All the chief stuff required on a running shoe there. I'm gonna give it a 2.6 out of three for the outsole after my initial runs. Just let down a little bit by the noise, quite frankly, it's loud. Value now. Goes to show how much an upper can affect the shoe's performance. Really is a much more enjoyable ride this time around. You know, it's reasonably plush, almost sort of hints of the Air Max in there, but it goes to show if the shoe fits, then the upper can really bring it all together. So price-wise, at 105 Earth credits, it's certainly in the ballpark. If you want a daily shoe, something that's dependable, that can do a load of different things, a real workhorse, I guess you could look at it and almost call it the Telecaster of running shoes. You know, if I'm thinking of other shoes I've tested recently, the Puma Velocity Nitro, the Energy 3 from Reebok, certainly in and around the right price. React foams proved to be pretty durable as well. And we know that outsole held up well on the last version of the shoe. I think Nike have got a good daily shoe on their hands again, albeit a little bit heavier than perhaps you would have wanted. Certainly a timely occurrence when other running shoe brands are catching them up a little bit. Nowhere near as compressive though as the float ride foam that you find in those Reebok models, but still a far better option to me at least than the Pegasus 37. Doesn't feel anywhere near as high in the arch either as that Infinity run, so it could be a good alternative if you're looking for a Nike shoe. As such, I'm gonna give it a slightly higher value score than I did the 37, a 2.4 out of three after my initial runs for value. So if I've added the scores up correctly, that gives us 10 out of 12 
for the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38 after my initial runs. Back on the right lines again Nike with this one. Decent upper. Good on you. Will you be picking this one up guys? Let me know in the comments. I did notice that they're re-releasing, or at least there's like a retro version of the Pegasus 83 coming in. And I think there's two colorways as well. I might have to pick one of those up just for, you know, just for kicks. A musical interlude for you today. This comes courtesy of the Eels, their 2000 album, Daisies of the Galaxy. Now, there's albums you buy that take you back to certain places that really transport you to a time to the smells, to the experiences, the weather, relationships and things that you had. And this is one of those albums for me. It means to me, Lansdowne Road in Bournemouth. Beautiful sunshine, sort of hazy kind of sunshine. All the time I lived in Bournemouth, I think I only got like wet like twice from the rain. It really was a lovely place to live. Every track here is great. I will warn you there is one track that does have some explicit language so do be careful guys. I love track two which is called Packing Blankets which is obviously all about somebody moving house, putting away all their things, kind of dusting the floor. Yeah, around about that time I moved around a little bit and it reminds me of those sorts of feelings. Sometimes they're quite exciting feelings but also a little bit anxious as well. The guitar tone on Daisies of the Galaxy is just so pure and clear. It's like the only instrument that's on there at the very start of the track. It's right there in front of you, like he could be playing that guitar right there. I love the whole scene that he kind of conveys there as well about the uh, these two friends sort of going to this tiny little cinema, little picture house somewhere. The sort of end of the world sort of around them all happening and they'll just watch whatever movies there. Like it's this kind of faded Polaroid image of this memory that he has really cool i really love the upbeat feel of a daisy through concrete that's a great track i like the whole idea of something really beautiful sprouting up from you know, this man-made sort of concrete and junk i really like that that's why i've always liked the film wally don't take any wooden nickels if you sell your soul guys that's another great track on here and there's like a hidden track at the end mysteries beautiful blues which you guys all know that one it's fantastic whole album's great go and check it out Daisies of the Galaxy by Eels. That just about wraps it up for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we roll out those new videos. And it really does help us out in terms of the YouTube algorithm if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.